Hey everybody, I'm Bryn and I'm a worship leader here at Shoreline Church. Well, worship is really the heartbeat of what we do here at Shoreline. We take it so seriously that we get the opportunity to help you guys come closer to God each Sunday. That creative process all starts right here at the inception team meeting. That's where we get the vision from teaching pastors, from music, videos, and even announcements for each one of our Sunday morning services. During our inception process, we really are just brainstorming ideas for visual parts of the service, the teaching time and the music, and even just how to connect people better with the different ministries we have here at Shoreline. And once the inception process is completed, we really have the vision. So each department, whether it's graphics or video or music, we all just get to work. And as each department works on their own individual projects, we check in with each other to collaborate and make sure that the vision is the same. And then we have the week of the service where each department stuff is pretty much finalized. So the video's done, the graphics are done, but really that's just the beginning for the worship team. All of our volunteers come in and we start practicing our songs and making sure we are prepared for Sunday morning. Our hope and our prayer is that we're able to create a space where anybody feels comfortable coming in to worship Jesus. And once you're here at Shoreline, you're worshiping Jesus in community. We don't want that to be the end of the story. We wanna get you connected. I'm Patty Whitmore. I'm the Connections Director here at Shoreline. Shoreline is a large church and we love that. But sometimes at a large church, it's hard to really feel connected and get to know people. We wanna help you with that. It's our goal to have everyone who attends Shoreline be connected in some way. So we're doing this whole church thing together. So we put a lot of time and effort into each worship service because at the end of the day, we just want people to worship Jesus. We want people to put God in his proper place. He is the king above all kings, the name above all names, and we want that to happen here at Shoreline. And each service, we take that so seriously. We see worship as an opportunity to connect with Jesus. We see it as an opportunity for hearts and lives to be changed forever. And that's what we hope for each week. church is every single person who's come to the foot of the cross, confessed their sins, received Jesus Christ's grace and his leadership of their lives. Every person who receives Christ, they become part of God's church, God's family. And there's people that are kind of like, well, I'm not sure. I think I just want to be a kind of an individual Christian. I don't want to be part of the church. Well, guess what? It doesn't work that way. I was born into the Harney family, and I'm a Harney. I didn't get, to, didn't get to choose. I'm going to be part of this family. And, and when you become a Christian, God says, I'm placing you into my family, into my church. And so we're going to be talking the next three weeks about, about what the church is, why, why God has formed this body called his church. Because the church is God's people when we gather like this, when we gather together. The church is God's people when we're in small clusters of believers together. And the church is God's people when we're scattered all over this community and for Shoreline Church all over the world. But we're still the church of Jesus Christ. The church scattered, the church in small groups, the church in large gatherings. And so what is it that God has called his church to do and be? And I believe it's really, really simple. I believe there's only three things that God calls us to do and be as his church, together in small groups and individually scattered. And they can be kind of seen with these three images that you've seen on our posters and on your bulletins. And that is that we exist to go upward to God and worship. The church exists to lift up God, to glorify him, to praise him, to listen for his voice, to have a relationship with him, whether we're on our own in a small group or all together, we are glorifying God. We focus upward. Everybody say upward. 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 That's why the church exists. Second thing, the church exists to move inward. Everybody say inward. 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 The church exists to move towards each other in fellowship and community. And the church exists to come together for spiritual growth and maturity, to grow more like Jesus Christ. We want to be in this community, connected in fellowship and growing spiritually together. We are focused inward as God's people. That's part of the call of Jesus. The third one, some of you are probably already ahead of me. If you've looked at the bulletin, you know where I'm going with two arrows pointing apart. The church exists to go take a wild guess. Outward. You are brilliant. Amazing. Outward with the gospel, outward with the good news of Jesus Christ, outward with hands to serve and hearts to love and to bring the grace of Jesus to the world. So, so here's, I mean, it's easy to remember. If you can't get this by the end of three weeks, you're just not trying. 
Because the church exists to go upward in worship, inward in discipleship and spiritual growth, and outward with organic outreach with loving the world. That's why we exist. In our daily lives, when we're together in clusters, and we're together like this. And so today we're going to begin with that, that first picture, that arrow going upward. We exist to go upward towards God in worship, to glorify him, to worship him, to lift him up. So I'm going to start with the most obvious question. And if you're a note taker, there's a place for you to write this down in your bulletin. There's a whole page to write some notes down. If that's helpful for you, fantastic. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to, to a Psalm chapter 100. Psalm 100. Why focus upward? And, and here's the biblical vision for why we focus upward. Listen to these words and notice sort of the, the arrow pointing up to God. Notice how theocentric or God-centered this psalm is. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord. That's upward, to his glory. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. This is all about God's glory. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Why focus upward? Why grow as worshipers? If you're a note taker, write these things down. Because God is worthy. Because God is worthy of our worship and lots more. God is worthy of our worship. He deserves our worship. And, and were we to give every moment of every day just giving glory to him and lifting him up, we couldn't fully give him praise for all he deserves. But he is worthy of our worship. If you believe God is worthy of worship, say amen. amen. I mean, this, this is who he is. And then, why focus upward? Because we were made to worship. We find life, meaning, and purpose in worshiping God. We, God, there's something within us, hardwired in our soul, in our being, to be worshipers. And everyone worships something. Some people worship themselves. Some people worship cars or things. Some people worship power or prosperity. And, and some people worship God. Wor what we worship is that which we put our, the greatest attention toward and our greatest focus toward. And we were made that our primary focus, not, not that we focus on nothing else, but the main focus of all of our lives is upward on God. And when we find this place, life begins to make sense. When I became a follower of Jesus, I grew up outside the church. When I became a follower of Jesus, I actually, right before I became a Christian, I went on this houseboat trip, and I went there because there was going to be water skiing and cute girls, and because uh, that's what motivated me at 16 years old. And, uh, and so I went on this houseboat trip, but every day on this house, we were stuck in the middle of the water. I couldn't get away, and every day they would gather to worship. And they would read the Bible, and they would pray together, and they would talk about their faith, and they would sing songs of praise. And before I became a Christian... There was, in that environment, when I was just kind of trapped there day after day after day, it stopped, it stopped feeling like pressure. And I started looking and going, something's here. There's something more than what I've ever experienced. I began to sense this, this presence of God that when I gave my life to Jesus, I experienced deep, more deeply and more fully. But as I watched these people worship, I saw the presence of the living God. And I saw them becoming who God wanted them to be. Why focus upward? Because something happens when we gather together. There is a unique thing that happens when God's people gather together to worship. Yes, we can worship out there when we're alone, and we should. Yes, we can worship in small clusters. But there is a way that God shows up and does things when we gather together in community. I'm convinced of this. And we miss out on it if we don't consistently, regularly gather with God's people. As I was thinking about this and preparing the message, I thought of, I thought of Sean Stroud who now leads our staff here at Shoreline Church and has been a great member of this team and a great leader in the life of this church. But when Sean came here as a colonel in the army, he came on a Wednesday night, night of worship, just like we had this last Wednesday night. And at that night of worship, the Holy Spirit of God spoke to Sean and gave him a call to ministry, which I think probably surprised you as much as anybody. He still had some years left in the military, but he knew that God was gonna call him and use him. 
And now you're experiencing the, and I saw your family took up the second row at the first service this morning. And God's just reorganized your whole family around that calling. This is what God, God moves in specific ways when we gather together. God can speak to us anywhere, but there's a unique way that God shows up when we're together in community. And there's something amazing and dynamic about that. We have to really get a hold of this idea of why God calls us to worship. And, and I want to invite Ben Spangler to come and join me. Uh, ben would never ask to come on the stage and speak. This is not Ben's thing, but I said to Ben, I want you coming up here and speak. Can we thank Ben for t- having the courage to come and share? And... Uh, and Ben leads our connections team, our communications team, which oversees video and graphics and all of that, and all of our worship team. And he is, he's creative, he's gifted, and he prefers to be behind the scenes. And, and Ben and his wife, Lacey, have, I'm always trying to guess, they move quickly, 14 kids. No, fewer than that. But, but they have a wonderful family. And I've, I've asked Ben to share his, because, because all that happens in worship at Shoreline and connections between, during the week and on the weekends He's called to lead that. That's so why I want him to share his heart so you can hear the heart of the one who's really leading us in worship, leading me in worship. So Ben, would you share with us? Thank you. Well, as Kevin said earlier, God is worthy of worship. And why should we worship God? It's because he is the creator of everything. He is the uncaused cause, and lifting up God and putting him in his proper place is worship. So everything you see, you taste, or touch was created by God or borrowed his materials. And everything belongs to him. And all of creation was spoken into being through him from his power and his love. And we can acknowledge him, giving him praise for his creation as an act of worship. And we are surrounded, why else should we worship God? It's because every good and perfect gift comes from him. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. And we are surrounded in his good works through his creation. We can recognize his goodness in his handiwork. We can see his fingerprints everywhere we go. Every place I've traveled in the world, I've seen God's handiwork where he has touched that in a unique and beautiful way. So we can acknowledge him and see him because of the wide palette of beauty that he's painted for us. All of it points to his glory. And God's gifts are seen in his handiwork, but also they're seen in relationships. So uh, we can see God's uh, good workmanship in friends and family. So these these are my five kids. There's five, not 14. There's actually five. (laughs) Ian, Kaya, Elise, Juliet, and Zalee, and uh, each of them has been truly a blessing to us. Uh, When my wife, Lisa, and I got married 19 years ago, we had no idea that God had five kids in store for us. We were thinking significantly less, but the Lord had a different plan. But each of them has been a blessing. Each of them has taught me something about God's love for his people, for each of us as a father, how he loves us so much. Each one astounds me by the uniqueness and the care that God put into forming them. I count my family as some of the greatest blessings that God has given to me, and I can celebrate God and worship him because of that. But it's not just that. God didn't create us to be alone. He created us to be in relationship. And each relationship that we're in, we can celebrate God's goodness. We can recognize and worship him because of our friends, because of our family. And God has gifted us uh, with those relationships. So why else should we worship God? It's because God is worthy even when we are not. When we were sinners, Christ died for us. We haven't overcome sin in the world and death. Jesus did. He died in our place on our behalf. So we can worship him because even though we're not good enough, he was. And when we lean into him and when we look at him instead of looking at ourselves, we can worship him. We can acknowledge and praise him because of his amazing love. And why else can we worship God? Because he asks us to. In Deuteronomy 6.5, the Bible gives us the greatest commandment, which is love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. And this command is repeated then again in Matthew and Luke. It says, love God with all of our, we should love God with all of our strength. Because worship is not a passive activity. To take love, to to love God and to worship him takes active engagement. We need to fight against our sin nature, the one that wants us to focus on ourselves. And instead, we should look to him. We should look at him, his good works, his good gifts, the fact that God rescued us from, from our sins and adopted us as children. We can worship him regardless of our circumstances when we're looking at him instead of ourselves. He is worthy of all of our worship. So let's pray together. 
Lord, we acknowledge that you are good, that your kindness has been lavished on us. Lord, you poured your grace out on us. And Lord, when we look to you, we just acknowledge that you are worthy of all of our worship. And we pray in your name, amen. We thank Ben for his leadership. Thanks. And, and I need to say, I have grown as a worshiper under Ben's leadership, and I'm deeply thankful for what he brings to Shoreline Church. So, so why worship? The reasons to worship are as infinite as the God that we worship. But, but we can also ask the question, when should we focus on worship? When should we focus upward? When should we focus on God in worship? And if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. And as I read this, you, you, it's really complicated. You have to almost bring a theologian in to explain the detail because it's really tough to see. See if you can catch the subtlety of the when. You ready? Okay, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, beginning of verse 16. Rejoice always. always. Now work on that. Wait, what, what's he trying to say? That's kind of fuzzy, right? Pray continually. continually. Oh, okay, well, I get that, okay. Give thanks in when? Always. All circumstances. But, but does this relate to me? Is this for me? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. <laughs> oh, I guess it is. I mean, if, if you have your own Bible and a highlighter or a pen, circle or highlight, always, continually, all circumstances. That's when we worship. We worship all the time in the flow of life when we gather together like this. So when should we focus upward? At all times, we pray unceasingly. We talk to God all the time. We can pray with our eyes closed or our eyes open at all times. When should we focus upward? In the hard times. And in the tough times of life, when we feel like we're in a pit and a hole in the ground, and that's when we look upward and see the light of God's presence, and we see that he hasn't left us alone, and he's watching over us. I love the prayer in the book of Jonah, where Jonah's in the worst place possible, the belly of a whale. And from the belly of the whale, he lifts up this glorious, beautiful prayer. What do you do when you're in the belly of a whale? You seek God's face. You look upwards from the depths. That's what Jonah did. Read that prayer sometime. It's powerful. When should we focus upward? In times of deliverance. When God shows up and delivers us, if, you have a, if, you have your own, if you're taking notes, write down Psalm 107, and read that later today, Psalm 107. It gives this person going through this tough thing in this situation, and yet God delivers them, and then they give praise to him, and then it gives another situation of struggle and peril and trouble, and God delivers, and they give praise to God, and there's this rhythm, again, of struggle, and then praise to God when God delivers. Whenever God delivers you, just look up and say, thank you, praise you, glory to your name. When things are great, Smooth, going well. I love Miriam's song. When the people of God have come out of Egypt and they've crossed the Red Sea and then Miriam leads the people in praise and worship by just saying, God, it looks upward and gives praise to God. Or Mary's song, when she finds out that the Holy Spirit has come upon her and she's bearing God among us, Emmanuel, and she lifts up praise to God. In the great times, in the deep pits of life, we look upward and we give praise, whatever the situation is. That the, that's the right time. Yesterday, Sherry and I did about an hour and a half hike in the Toro Hills. And we had, it was a great hike and it was great exercise. But I, I would say probably in that hour and a half hike, and we didn't plan this in terms of, of how we would spend that time. But I, I would say that we probably spent about an hour of that time looking upward. We prayed together. We prayed for Shoreline Church. We prayed for each of our children and for our son's wives, and for our grandson. We prayed for some family members in our, in our family that are going through really hard times and really deep, painful valleys. And we would walk and talk, and then we'd just start praying. And we'd walk and talk, and we'd start praying. And, and just, just upward, 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 because, because it was the right time. That's when is any time. And then corporately when we gathered together, last Wednesday night, one of, for me, it was this last Wednesday night, night of worship was one of the sweetest most spirit-led, spirit-filled experiences I've had in worship probably in the last three or four years. God just showed up. There's times where God just shows up by his spirit and it's powerful and it's sweet and you can feel the presence of the living God. So to be here with many of you just praising God and lifting up, man, that's the right time. When's the right time? Always, continually. So where? And you probably get the answer to this already because if we're doing it all the time, it's got to be everywhere. But where do we focus upward? Listen to these words from Psalm 24, 1 to 2. Psalm 24, 1 to 2 says this, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. 
For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Psalm 113 verse 3 says, From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Where do we praise God? Everywhere. Everywhere we go. Where do we focus upward? Where do we worship? Where do we praise God? Well, first, anywhere. Everywhere. Wherever we are. We can worship God. We can focus up on him. Hiking in the Toro Hills, driving in a car, sitting in a, in, a, in, a, in a cubicle in an office setting, in the middle of a meeting, our heart can just turn upward towards God, and we can worship him and praise him, and we should praise him and worship him and focus upward everywhere we go, absolutely. But also, there's this sense in the scriptures that we're called to gather together. There's something about worshiping God in the tabernacle, in the temple, in, 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 in a place of gathering. You know, our, our, our place over the years, Sherlin here, when Sherlin first moved into this space, it looked like and felt like a warehouse because it was a warehouse. And, uh, and, but with time, we're you know, fixing things up and, and making it a little bit nicer. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, the, the, what, this building doesn't make things sacred around here. God's presence makes things sacred. Amen? It's the presence of God that makes things sacred. But there is something about a place where God's people gather together. And I want to challenge you as your pastor that you would, you would just say, I want to make gathering with God's people a part of the rhythm of my life. And I want to teach this rhythm to my children and to my grandchildren. Not as a chore of something we have to do, but as a delight to come with God's people and together to look upward. Because there's something about worshiping God together that's just different than when we're alone. Can we worship when we're alone? What's the answer? Yes, of course, and we should. We need to do it more and more. But there's something unique about being together. And here's something I do know. We have a lot of people who follow our services online. And for many of them, if they could be here with you today, they would be here in a heartbeat. There's usually 100 or 200 people that are worshiping with us on a normal Sunday. So hi to all of you worshiping all over the world and all over our country. And, 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 and we love that. I get, I get a report almost weekly from a shoreline person who uh, was actively involved here and the military has sent him to another part of the world, other side of the planet. But every Sunday, he's worshiping here with us. And then, usually between second and third service, I get a little written report on how the service went. <laughs> Hits my email. Pastor, this touched my heart and God spoke this to me and I'm gonna make this commitment to follow Jesus more passionately. And, 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 but I know for this person, if they, if they could be here among us, they would love to be here and see everyone face to face and sing praises with you. And I want to give an encouragement to our online community. If you're far away or if you're sick, and we're so glad you have this tool to use to be with us. But I'm, just give me a second here, congregation. I'm talk, not talking to a family worship venue. You're in there, but to online. But if you're local and you could be here and you're just staying home because it's convenient, I would challenge you to be here. If it's a five-minute drive or a 20-minute drive, it's worth being here among God's people. So I want to give you that invitation. And, and I know for many of us, it's, it's, it's different when, when you're not physically here. Sherry and I try to follow our services when we're traveling. And so we feel like at two or three in the morning, watch services when you're in Australia or different places. And we love it, but it's different. Like we're, you know, we're usually sitting on a bed in a hotel room and we're like in our PJs and we're just kind of like, it's a different experience, you know? It's casual here, but it's not that casual. Uh, <laughs> Some people are like, well, PJs, I could go with that. Um, but, but, the, but I want to, I just, there's something about God. There's a way that God moves. There's a way that God speaks. There's a way that we sing praise. There's a way that we pray that something doesn't quite translate across. So I'm glad we have that tool for the people who can't be here. But if you can be here, make this a part of There's something wonderful about it. So we can worship out there, but also we worship when we gather together. And we need to keep expanding that. I think of some of the sweetest times I've had in worship through the years have been spontaneous times. I used to, when I was a, when I was a volunteer youth leader, when I was a new Christian, I volunteered with a, a church in Garden Grove, California. And um, I had a, a group of maybe about 75 high school kids that I volunteered to help with. And there was this group of about 10 guys that loved to worship. And these are all freshmen, sophomore, junior, and seniors in high school. And we all would kind of keep guitars in the trunks of our cars. And we'd get together and somebody would say, hey, let's go somewhere and worship. So we'd go to the beach and we just sing songs of praise to God. Or we'd go park on top of the parking structure at South Coast Plaza open, with the open sky above us and kind of put our cars in a circle. And just sometimes for hours just sing praise to God and glorify him. It was powerful. We, we need to engage our hearts and our lives wherever we are at any time.
And then how do we focus upward? And this is a big question. What does that look like? I mean, how do we, how do we enter into worship at a deeper level? And I love this passage. If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, Jesus is talking with this woman. He's traveling through this region called Samaria. He's talking to a woman. He's having a theological conversation, a rabbi with a woman in the ancient world. That would never have happened in the ancient world. It doesn't even happen in modern-day Jerusalem now. Most rabbis won't talk theology with women in a public context. It's just kind of the way the culture is. But 2,000 years ago, unheard of. But Jesus has this amazing conversation with this woman. And kind of in the middle of it all, in verse 23... In John 4, we read these words. This is Jesus speaking to this woman. He says, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father, I love this, I love this, the Father seeks. He's looking, God is looking for people who will worship him. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and and in truth. Now, I could do a whole sermon on each of those words, but let me just give you kind of, kind of a, 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 a key thought. To worship in the Spirit is to worship in the power of and the presence of and the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want to challenge you that when you gather here for worship or if you're online and you're getting ready for worship with us and you can't drive here and get here, but you want to worship with us, right before the service starts, corporate worship, that you would just say, Spirit of God, do what you want to do in me today. Spirit of God, unleash my mouth to sing praise to you. Spirit of God, help me enter into worship and not be distracted and critical, but just engaged in giving glory to Jesus. Spirit of God, lead me and guide me to give you glory. Being, worshiping in spirit is being led and moved by the Holy Spirit. And sometimes that means the Spirit's going to convict us. You might want to pray, Spirit of God, if I need conviction or challenge or I need to confess something, let me know. You're like, I don't know, do I want to pray that one? Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Spirit of God, do what you want to do in me. But we also worship in truth. And that word truth has lots of different meanings, but, but the one I want to focus on just for a moment, to worship in truth is this, to worship with honesty before God and with integrity. To come as you are. If that means you come to worship and you say, God, today, I feel so far from you. And I feel, I, I feel a lack of trust because what I'm going through and I feel distance from you and I feel even frustration. Tell God. God has infinitely big shoulders. He can take it. Say, God, I'm, I'm hurting and I just need you today just to, just to fill my soul. But I'm gonna do all I can to lift you up and to focus upward and to give you glory. And God, would you meet me in this time? Or you come in and you say, God, I'm feeling great today. I'm so filled with joy. I'm, re I'm just, I'm ready to worship. Wonderful. But, but let God know where you're at and say, God, I'm, but no matter where I'm at, I'm going to give you glory because, man, worship is about you, God. It's about your glory. It's about lifting you up. And so to worship him in spirit and truth is the call of Jesus. How do we focus upward? In spirit and truth. It's a matter of the heart. We, we worship him in spirit. We worship him in truth. How do we focus upward? We worship him in song. There's value in singing together. You, you do a study sometime on how many times the Bible talks about singing. The book of Psalms, the longest book in the Bible, it's 150 songs of praise or confession or heartache, but it's songs of praise to God. And so singing together, and I want to challenge you that when we come together corporately and when we sing praise to God, it is not about me, it's not about you, it's about his glory. And so take those words, and maybe you say, I'm not, a, I'm not a big singer. I don't want to sing loud. I want to sing kind of quietly. That's fine. But those words you sing, make them your prayer. Lift them to God. Give him glory. Engage. Don't sit back and critique. Oh, I don't, I don't like that song. Or, oh, no, we, could, we could have done that chorus three times, not four times. Maybe take a note of that. Maybe let someone know, you know. Um, you know don't, don't, if you get consumed in glorifying God. Throw yourself into praising him. The rest will work itself out. But, but to, to engage in worship. How do we focus upward? In prayer, talking to God, speaking to him, listening for his voice, corporately or out there wherever we go. In celebration, be willing to celebrate God's goodness and give him glory. If you're a note taker, write these two things down. When you come together for corporate worship, when you come for corporate worship with God's people, three words, make a decision. Make a decision. I'm here to glorify the living God because he deserves my praise and I need to praise him. Someone say amen. amen. 
just make that, I'm, I am here to glorify God. I'm going to see my friends, that's great. I'm going to learn something from the word, that's great. But whatever happens, man, I better be sure that God gets lifted up and glorified because if I've come to worship and God's lifted up, I've done everything I need to do. And everything else is a bonus. Do you know that worship is about God's glory? So make a decision. I will be with God's people and I will be here to glorify God. I'm focusing upward. Now he's going to rain down his blessings on you. That's a great part of it. But let your focus be giving him glory. And then in those times where you're out there on your own, just kind of walking through life and you want to worship as a, be a worshiper out there in every walk, act of life, two words, write this down. Pay attention. Pay attention throughout your day and you will see God showing up. You will see his beauty and his glory. You will hear his voice. God is speaking more than we hear. God is present more than we experience. Pay attention to where God is present and working on your campus, at your workplace, in your home, in in the flow of your daily life. God is there. And when you notice and when you pay attention, then you give him praise. Then you give him glory. And you watch the road because you're still, still driving. But you give him praise, you know. And you give him praise and glory, but you also remember that you're in the middle of a meeting, and so you better pay attention. And you give him praise and glory, but you realize that you're listening to a lecture and you're in class, so you better keep taking your notes. But and the, along the way, you're like, man, that's strange. God, praise you, glorify you. I mean, you don't have to raise your hand. Woo, but you can just, just in your heart, lift him up. You know, just, just do it. If you raise your hand, they're going to have the teacher calling you, you know, but, but, uh, but, just, but just in your heart, lift up, and then keep doing what you're doing, but pay attention to where God is at work and what God is doing. Well, one of the other people who is part of our team who really um, is a critical piece, so it's on our executive team and a critical piece of helping us worship and also overseeing a, a, lot of, a lot that happens with videos and a lot of things that happen with all the graphics and all that is Donna Brown. So I've invited Donna Brown also to come up here. And Donna also was not knocking on my door begging for a chance to come up front and talk. But, um, but I believe that Donna's heart as a leader... Can we welcome Donna? Yeah. Um, uh, Donna's heart as a leader is just, she has a passion for worship. And she brings the arts together for us, and she brings visuals and graphics and all of our communication stuff. So she's helping us connect with God all through the week in the bulletins, which gives us daily reading for the scriptures, all those things. Everything comes through her office and through her hands. And so, Donna, you are called by God to help us grow as worshipers. You're part of our whole worship division. What do you do? Tell us about what it, what it is that God's called you to do here. I oversee the communications department here in, at Shoreline. Uh, there's four of us, uh, as well as me. I, we have our video director, Thomas Ryan, our, Jake, our uh, graphics director, Jacob Pearl, and we have an administrative assistant for our department who is bilingual and does a lot of our Spanish translations, and that's Ileana Zapotecas. The communications department, our focus and our goal is to be able to connect all of you, all of us, um, with each Sunday's message, with our sermon series, and with all of the ministries and things that happen here at Shoreline. So we use all different mediums for that. When you walk on our campus on a Sunday morning, you'll see posters and banners. If you walk up to a courtyard booth, you'll see, might be handed a flyer or some sort of information about an upcoming event. Um, a really important form of communication we have is the bulletin that you get every morning when you come in on a Sunday. Uh, we both connect you visually to the message on the front of the bulletin, uh, a note-taking, area, as well as on the back, uh, information about weekly reading and other ways that you can connect with the Sunday message. Also really important in this is the way that we connect with you about upcoming events and uh, different ways to connect, to grow, to serve here in the church. Um, As a way of communicating that to you, we do this. And then as a follow-up on Wednesday mornings, uh, those of you who are subscribed also receive our weekly email. This is a really great option. Um, Also, we hope you're sitting at your desk or at a a computer where you can just click through to that and you can find more information on our website. You can click through to register and get set up to to really grow um, in ways that that are meant for you. I know the heart of Donna and her whole team is to help us in that all week long, as well as when we're gathered here, help us worship and grow in our faith. And I think in the course of a year, there's, there's hundreds of things happening at Shoreline. And she helps navigate all those things and let us know what's going on so we can keep growing in our faith. But here on Sunday mornings, I know one of the things that's a passion for you and your team is to help like lock into our minds a series or a, a, a visual or something to remember what we've learned. So talk about that process and, and how, you, how it's really intentional. 
We heard a little bit about it in the video this morning about our inception process. We meet uh, together with the worship department and the communications department along with our preaching pastors come together to months ahead of time before a series um, begins to discuss um, everything from music and especially from on our end, the visuals. The, um, one of the things we think a lot about are the graphics and we want to be able to connect you in a way um, that you will get the, the large concept. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples this morning. The first one is from a series in August of 2017 called Enough. This was a series really about learning to experience God's love and the joy in our lives um, in a simple way without all the stuff cluttering it. Um, so we used a less is more um, graphic with just that just said enough. And the purpose was to connect you with that. Um, in Stark contrast to that, uh, also in 2017, was a series called Why Bother? This was a series about the church and why it matters and what role we each play in that. So we chose to depict this uh, with a 19th century older style church um, surrounded by a more modern world, and in this case, a very dark world. And the concept was how the church is still a beacon of light to this day, and that we itself, it's not the building per se, but that that we, the people of the church, are the beacon of light in our society and more important today than ever. And one of the things, that, one of my favorite things that your department does is you create these visuals, these video pieces. Sometimes they're real sober, sometimes they're kind of devotional, sometimes they're funny, but they kind of, and sometimes people say to me, oh, remember that sermon you preached about? And they'll just talk about the video. And I'm like, well, that wasn't a sermon, that was a video, but I get the point. You know, but they, but, but that, that's memorable. So talk to about how you help kind of your team creates those moments, those experiences to help tie that, that biblical truth into our hearts. Mm -hmm. We use the video as a transition piece from our time of worshiping through song into and setting up the message. And we really um, are intentional about the tone of that. So sometimes you'll see a video piece that's very reflective, possibly meditative even on a specific Bible verse that someone might be reading and that you'll hear visually. You might see the words on the screen. Uh, another way is often we have um, members of our congregation who have experienced a trial, a struggle, um, or great joy um, that relates to something in our series. And they might be willing to share with us and uh, we're able to put together a video that they're able to tell their story in a way that we hope many of you would relate to. Um, we do have a lot of fun when we're able to use some humor. And we know that humor is kind of a universal language of helping people connect through smiling, maybe um, being able to see themselves and not take it so seriously or be able to see themselves in a, a certain concept. So I'm gonna show you a video that was from a series that we did on peace. Um, the particular week was about peace in relationships. And we knew that going into this that there's many of us who struggle um, with certain relationships. And it's it's really um, on our lives and on our heart a difficult thing. So we found a real couple in our church that were very different. And they were able to tell us this story through their video. Um, and we see that they have found peace in their relationship. Please watch the screens. Everybody buckled, Ellie buckled? Yeah. Let me see. Sometimes I'm the guy with the ball who's kicking it back. Or the big breeze to the choir. Singing on a country track. I might be the guy with. Oh, hey, honey. Oh, hi, babe. How was your day at work? That was good. Hi, buddy. Hi. Yeah, let's get you out of here and go inside, okay? Go inside, let's go inside. Hi. Hi. So here are 
at Shoreline, our mission is to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. And we're gonna do this by continuing to brainstorm ways to connect you all with our message, with our ministries here at Shoreline, and as we do this, that you'll be able to worship God. So we pray that through all of our efforts that you will be inspired to worship God every day. I want to invite Ben to come and join us up here. And, and I just want to close by saying, yeah, can we thank uh, Ben and Donna for their leadership? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and these two people, and I want to share with you, we have a team of people that does our connections, that does our communications, that does our worship, that uh, greets you at the front desk when you come in at the church. And this is, these people are all part of our worship division, if we can show that picture up there. And one of them in the very uh, middle uh, Bottom there is actually, this is her last Sunday with us. She's headed with a military out, uh, Jordan, but she's been a great part of our team. But that team, every week, is striving to use their gifts to help all of us grow more in worship. And I've grown more in worship because of their leadership. So I want to ask you, will you join me in praying for them? You can pray with your eyes closed or open. I'm going to look at this team up here as I pray in these two. But Lord, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this team of people who greet people at the front desk, who do our connections and our communications and our videos and our worship and our graphics and, and just use their gifts for the glory of Jesus. We translate our, all of our things into Spanish for those who need that. I want to thank you for Ben and Donna and for their leadership. And I pray that you would bless our worship team and fill them with your spirit and lead them and guide them and use them to lead all of us into your presence to be more passionate in worship. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.